Castello. We are right at the beginning of Castello and slowly we are going to try to go down to the area of the arsenal. Today, <laughs> the challenge, we've got two challenges. Challenge number one. And so the weather is really nice, but it's a bit windy. And so we might have a few problems with the microphone, the noise, and whatever else. Challenge number two. Ciao Nina, buon pomeriggio. Challenge number two. Since that we're going to be in a really remote area. Ciao Julie, buongiorno. Since that we are going to be in a really remote area, the problem is going to be the signal. <laughs> that is going to be a little bit funny here and there. Let's check it out what is happening. Buongiorno, buongiorno. Ciao, ciao to all of you. Thank you for the lovely message from uh, I love you, Venice. And we are pretty much ready and we are about to start actually our walk that is going to take us right in the heart of uh, Venice. Andiamo. Let me move a little bit. Ciao Anna, buongiorno, ciao to all of you and so definitely today that we will be walking around any kind of question that you got just write it down in the chat box that it will be the easiest way to answer since that we are going to be in an area that normally is not going to be covered up Ciao Adriano, ciao since that is normally not going to be covered up by a lot of tourists it's going to be really really quiet and extremely different than all the other areas that we're normally seeing in Venice itself and so we are starting directly from the area of the ospedale of the hospital that's what exactly it is nowadays the big palace the big building that is right in front of us but it used to be the scuola grande di san marco the great school of san mark that they were ciao jen ciao grazie mille buongiorno buongiorno and uh, so definitely uh, we would have had a different kind of scuole scuola grande di san giovanni we would have had a scuola di san fantino dei picai a scuola grande di san rocco uh, there were amazing uh, spots where you was uh, basically learning how to do business. Uh, there were great associations uh, that they were helping out uh, uh, people with different kind of problems uh, and so on. And uh, you can clearly see that the entire facade is totally decorated with marble, which is totally different for from the unfinished facade of the uh, church of San Giovanni e Paolo, St. John and St. Paul. And by the way, the big door gate, the big gate that is exactly right here, is arriving from the lovely little island of Torcello. And so right there, uh, in a certain moment of our history, we would have had something like 20, 30,000 people actually, inhabitants in Torcello. Once uh, that the main canal started to be filled up with uh, sand uh, and uh, rubbles and rocks uh, and so we were not able to use Torcello as a port, uh, as a dock, actually they moved the entire life uh, into Venice itself. And uh, the entire idea is that they even used the stones of the palaces over there and they even used uh, the gates or the stones actually that they were uh, around uh, that area and so here we go that slowly we're going to take our walk that we're going to see Mr. Colleoni that uh, it was uh, an important night that he was fighting in this area and uh, slowly slowly right now we're going to start our walk as I told you the major problem today is going to be the signal that uh, in a little second I need to run I need to go a little bit faster and look at cistern and so remember that we got approximately 8,000 cisterns that there are cisterns that they are spread out all over the entire island of Venice 5,000 they would have been <coughs> tutto è buono se non si deve andare a San Michele si hai, hai pienamente ragione Nina yeah, yeah everything is good if we don't have to go to the island of San Michele San Michael which is the cemetery which is just around the corner but definitely here we go this one is one of the most incredible cisterns that we got in the island. As we were saying, we got approximately 8,000, uh, something like uh, um, 5,000, they would have been uh, 
private, uh, sorry, 5,000 public, and we would have had something like a 3,000 private. And some, uh, they are arriving directly from the Byzantine Empire, and some actually, they are arriving from previous buildings and previous uh, uh, gardens that uh, they would have been right here in Venice. Uh, it's still a little bit early, but in uh, really soon, we're going to have what? All the kids that are going to come in this square to play. And as you can see, they're normally drawing with the chokes uh, directly on the floor. And that is, is still great. And so growing up in Venice is just fantastic. And uh, today we are extremely lucky because, uh, of course, we don't, have, as you can see, we don't have any kind of high tide. I remind you that uh, 2019, it was around the 12th of November in this area, the situation was pretty much a big disaster. We would have had water up to there, more or less. And uh, I'll show you a watermark right here. Look at this watermark, uh, that is another crazy thing. So we're going to see a watermark that is pretty much dating back of the 19 of 2. Sorry if we cannot see it too clearly, but this one is 10th of September 1902. And so the situation would have been a little bit different. And look how deep this area is. So think about that the original foundations, they are almost a thousand years old. And the year after here, we added up all the cobblestones on the top of the previous one. So that's the reason why that all over Venice, you are always going to find, not piazza, but campo. Campo means a field, and you spell like C-A-M-P-O. So in the past, we would have had grass literally everywhere. We started to put it down all the bricks to make everything solid and compact. And then slowly, uh, especially 700 years ago, we started to put down all the cobblestones that you see right now, that they are all volcanic stones. And they are pretty much arriving from the area of Padua. And so the area of uh, um, uh, they used to be volcanoes actually. And so these stones, they are solid. <coughs> Normally you don't have any kind of of problems with the erosion of the salted pretty much forever and so we're extremely lucky with everything and so right now until the flower shop i need to go a little bit faster because the uh, the signal is normally not that great and look at here this one is one of the few stained glass windows that uh, is still existing here in the area of Venice. Uh, of course, with all the settlings. Uh, uh, how cold is uh, today? Uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, we should be around uh, 60, 65 uh, uh, gem. And so it's not cold at all, actually. It's just, uh, it's just pleasant. As you can see, we, we need just a, a little jacket, a little sweater. I go fast at this side because it's funny pleasant from this point on it should be funny let's have a look at how everything is gonna be sorry I'm laughing for the dog that is having fun <laughs> and um, you know definitely that the weather is great at this real moment uh, and uh, it might be a little bit windy but it's not what is it in C in C uh, see what, what what does it mean? See, Jam, just let me know. See what is it in C? Campo, you mean, or Calle? And so right there you got Calle, C A L L E. That is arriving from Latin, and that it means a street. And right now we are getting into the Barbaria delle Tolle. And so T Street, it would have been and so down looking for sorry. Sorry, sorry. 
<laughs> I'm slow today, <laughs> my fault. No, that was um, around uh, p -p 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 uh, 25 or so. Si, 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 tight grazie Nina. <laughs> I'm just slow. Okay, okay. But definitely what but uh, it is just pretty good. Definitely took care uh, let me go a little bit faster. Keep this section. Let me see. Here we go. That we should be back. The Barbaria delle Tolle. Barbaria delle Tolle. It was exactly tall, it's like plank, blanket. And so right in this area, especially on the left hand side, we would have had different, uh, a big... Yeah, yeah, Julie, I know, I know that uh, a lot now for a few seconds at time. I know, Julie, now it should be slightly better. And so from this point until the next square, he should be okay. We tested a bunch of times, but unfortunately, uh, we can go through. Yeah, definitely it's pretty warm. And look at here. Some of the historical pictures of the area. Look at the ice that we would have had here in Venice through the centuries. And this picture is uh, my favorite one. So, and so when the circus was coming into Venice, they would have let do a parade with the animals uh, through the streets, uh, through the alleys, up and down the bridges, and that would have been uh, pretty great. And uh, here we go. That uh, everybody knows him. No, no need to explain. But the entire idea of these pictures—they are just uh, phenomenal. They are just magic and uh, amazing. And uh, think about that Barbaria delle Tolle. On the last few years, it became more like uh, mm, the artistic part of the city. So we got a, a lot of uh, antique shops that they are definitely selling, uh, <laughs> of course, uh, glass from the different period of time. But on the last few years, we were even having people that they do mosaics and uh, as like uh, some of the best uh, art schools uh, in Ravenna and of course the Byzantine Empire that he was uh, running and ruling us uh, for a little period of time actually uh, it gave us uh, a lot of uh, ideas and you can see that they are amazing and they are extremely talented here we go but so you can see that they are Thank you, Anna, for the conversion. I believe that we are around 65, uh, more or less. Uh, and so we are more like uh, 20 degrees at the moment. Uh, and uh, that, that's about uh, the entire idea. And so it's definitely pretty warm. And that, that's the other beauty. Here we go. That we got all the door knockers. Uh, that we got a foundry. That is the foundry that is called Valese. That they are still producing everything totally handmade and uh, they are situated in the Canareggio district and those are just uh, amazing. They are producing all the, um, the um, decorations of the gondolas actually, still like in the ancient days. And so we were definitely talking about the Barbaria della Tolle and so think about all the big trees, they would have come exactly right in this area at the real beginning because uh, this area would have been just area. And uh, right here we would have had a big massive, uh, let's say, bay. And uh, the entire idea was uh, down this way, down this way actually, uh, we got what? We got uh, uh, the sea, of course, that I will show you in a little second. But down this area we would have had this lovely bay where they would have collected all the um, wooden pilings that they were arriving from the Piave River and they would have kept uh, all the wooden pilings in the water for several months uh, until that the salted water would uh, kill all the bacteria, all the termites before pounding them directly into uh, the swamp, uh, directly into the marshland actually. And that's exactly how everything was working in those days. And even the sun would have killed all the little 
bacteria and termites and all these things. So here we got that. Of course, all over Italy, we got always a lot of shrines and little chapels dedicated to Jesus, Virgin Mary. It's a way to protect the family and to keep us safe, of course. Uh, even if uh, in Venice we got approximately 187 churches in something like 120 islands approximately. And right now, slowly we are going uh, to continue to get uh, into the area where we got pretty much all the schools. So think about uh, that uh, uh, normally this is the area where all the students, uh, high school, Exactly right in this little second we're going to continue and uh, the signal it should be slightly better especially because we got more open space and we don't have barriers or something here we go look Liceo Scientifico that's pretty much uh, how the science school uh, look like here in Venice <laughs> And that uh, this is one of the main canal that is pretty much linking uh, the airport uh, and uh, is going to go all the way down to get into Piazza San Marco and the Bay of San Marco. And then uh, we are just behind uh, of the Church of San Lorenzo, San Lorenzo, the big church that is exactly there. <coughs> that is exactly where um, Mr. Marco Polo has been buried. So let me show you pretty much how this area looked like. So normally it's a big massive residential area. You don't have normally uh, a lot of shops. You might have, uh, I mean fashion shops and all these things. So you got uh, all the grocery stores and all the practical shops that you might need. Here we go. That's so you can get a full idea of the entire area that we got all the big sharp turn and this is quite interesting because right over there you got the mirror that at least that when they are coming this way at least they see if there is anybody arriving and uh, you can definitely see the tide that at the moment uh, is pretty low compared to normal that normally is exactly where the black line is exactly right there so at the moment uh, we are in the six hours uh, that the, um, the the tide is definitely low. So we got six hour high, six hour low, six hour high, six hour low. Is we supposed to have had problems with the high tide? At this real moment, we are extremely lucky actually, because we are not having any kind of problems. We had problems last week. Uh, Thank you, Akan. Thank you. Ciao, ciao, dalla Svezia. Ciao, grazie mille, Akan. Thank you to all of you for supporting the channel. Thank you for helping us out. And uh, thanks especially to your donations, uh, your kind donations. We are always able to show you some of the most interesting spots uh, of the entire island. Uh, we are pretty much uh, one of the few youtube channels uh, that is definitely dedicated to venice uh, that they show you exactly how the situation look like uh, and you can have a, a live stream directly and you can have a live chat anytime so grazie mille grazie mille grazie a tutti for supporting that is always extremely important and so uh, I, I reached this area something like one hour ago and so we had all the students that they ended up the school exactly in this area and so they left the science school and they started to go down home but let's say science here next building is the one of tourism and from this point we might have a bunch of problems with because it's, it, it might be a little bit windy because at the real end of the embankment uh, uh, we got <laughs> definitely a little bit of wind another thing look the new style the new techniques for the restorations anyway by the way any kind of question that you got go ahead really help happy to answer to any kind of questions just write it down everything in the chat box 
and then I will be answering. But look at here, we are not putting plaster all the way down anymore because we figured out that when we got the high tide, the plaster is absorbing the humidity and then everything is totally cracking and exploding. Nina, si parlava di cimitero, eccolo là, yeah. We were talking about the cemetery <laughs> in a second, we're going to get a, a closer look. We keep, we keep the distance, by the way. But think about that this entire area, compared to the Grand Canal or compared to other areas that we visited, with our tours actually is slightly different because we don't have, we got some really, really nice buildings and palaces. Simple. Um, the lights are beautiful. And there you are totally right. And in a little second, we're going to start to have uh, uh, the golden hours pretty much. And so the lights are going to be pretty incredible. I believe that um, once that we're ending up uh, this embankment uh, at the real end, uh, the, the view will be pretty much spectacular. That's pretty much uh, where the kids, uh, the teenagers, they are normally having the morning break from the school. And that's how the playground look like. Here we go. In the past, they would have had, uh, in this palace, they would have had their own private uh, uh, well cistern, actually. And, but let's go. Uh, and uh, if you are coming, or you probably remember last spring that we were doing the tours, uh, that we had wixteria, that it was in blossom literally everywhere. So everybody is looking forward to see the springtime and to have all the flowers of the wisteria in blossom. And that is going to be really, really nice. In a couple of minutes, we're going to go down this alley and at the real end that you can... Hold on, the gimbal is getting a bit funny. At the real end, actually, we got to the church of San Francesco della Vigna. In Venice, everything is beautiful, not only the cemetery. You are right. I mean, not because I live here, actually, but I'm, I travel a lot my entire life, actually. And for almost 20 years, I was doing European coach tours from Portugal to Russia, North Cape down to Greece, and even, let's say, before the COVID, actually, we travel a lot a lot a lot and uh, but definitely the colors that you can get it from here is just magical actually <laughs> here we go <laughs> that's uh, the classical the iconic picture that you can normally get from venice uh, and uh, we've mentioned a lot of times in our tour that here in venice there's no privacy that hanging everything out of the window of everybody's no <laughs> knows uh, what you're wearing <laughs> And uh, here we go. The entire idea is just fantastic. Here we go. But oh, you're right. And the lights they are just le mutantine. Si, esatto, esatto. <laughs> the underwear. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. <laughs> of course, we need to have a little laugh here and there. Practical problems. And so at this real moment, the, uh, the tide is really low. And so the steps are ending up over there. There's a big space between the last step and the, um, and the boat, actually. Here we go. That in a second, you're going to see the delivery boat. That they, <laughs> they are definitely the rimming frames. Seems so. And that is quite interesting. Sorry for the noise of the wind, that let me keep the microphone a bit covered. Give me a second, sorry. There we go. Hop, let's see if you are going to hear noise. I try to do my best. Yeah, here is a bit windy, but it worth a second. That, so in this way, we're going to see the northern part of the lagoon. Let's have a look. Uh, by the way, for the one that they never been to Venice, uh, I know that is not nice to talk about uh, Nina. Here we go, San Michele. And that's pretty much the boat of the undertaker together with the boat of the policeman. And so they put normally the coffin, the casket right here and they do the procession directly into the San Michele, St. Michael Island that is right in front of us. 
uh, <laughs> San Michele, <laughs> you might have, that, that's the name of the boat, of course, but the other name is Fenice, Phoenix, <laughs> the mythical, but ciao Debra, the ashes, oh, the view is going to be really spectacular, that the reflections of the water and the sun that is illuminating <coughs> the walls of San Michele, they are just beautiful. And uh, here is, uh, let me let me try to describe the situation, sorry for the wind, but uh, right here is really funny and only in Venice uh, can happen. And so this section here, it's uh, associations of rowers. So normally you send your son, your daughter to learn how to row right in this area. But this building right here is the supermarket. And so you got the supermarket and the rowing uh, um, school that they are one in front of, uh, of each other. Cos'è questo? Lo Stix? Il, dovrebbe essere la Cop o il Prix, non mi ricordo più. Adesso vediamo. Aspettate, give me a sec. Hold on. Oh, here we go. We got the view over the marina. Here we go. That's pretty much the Cop. And here we go. We got the rowing school canotteri querini that they are exactly here let me go up the, uh, the bridge look at the view that we're having from here which is quite spectacular and exactly there so the big bell tower is san francesco della vigna and the vineyard is something like uh, Oh, almost a thousand, eleven hundred years old. He's the oldest that we got in town. And uh, the big funny structure that is right there is uh, the gas meter. Uh, Debra, is it expensive to own a boat? Let's say, let me see. Oh, let's do a practical example. Let me try not to fall into the water, which is pretty interesting. Let's say you buy maybe the white boat. It's going to be something like six, seven thousand euros. If you buy a second hand one and to uh, buy to rent a uh, um, boat parking lot, you need the 360 euros a year. So it's not plus uh, the the insurance uh, that there are other two three hundred euros so it's not too 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 expensive actually but at the end of the day it, you don't really need to have uh, a boat we normally need the boat just to go to the beach <laughs> and that's about it so you can definitely see we're going to see the church later on from there but from here all the way down there we got all the, um, the the entire vineyard. The docking is an expensive compared. Yeah, <laughs> Debra, what we pay for a year, you pay for half an hour in New York. I know, I know. That uh, parking in New York, they are crazy expensive. I know, I know, unfortunately. But here we go. You can clearly see how vast. Uh... Ciao, Rose. Eden, welcome, welcome to the channel. I love you, Venice. Grazie mille. Thank you for joining. Look what is arriving right now. The boat of the ambulance, the boats of the hospital, the boats for the emergencies. <laughs> uh, what if, if you use a rubber boat or a mattress, maybe um, you might get arrested after two seconds, probably. <laughs> and, uh, uh, well, I, I promise I will bring you oranges and a nice cake uh, once in a while <laughs> but on the other hand I know that is not too clear let me see if I can no oh, let me see if I can show you a little bit more well, let's say the island over there is the island of Santerasmo and that's exactly where all the artichokes, eggplants, tomatoes, they are normally coming from. And then the island with the trees over there is the island. Thank you, Tuxedo Inn. Grazie mille. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Grazie, grazie. 
and then the island that is over there is the um, the island of the Lazzaretto, the leprosy and uh, the entire idea is water is uh, the place where they would have ended up the people for the quarantine even the goods and items they would have been there for 40 days unfortunately i remind you that the word quarantina quarantine has been invented here in venice and now everybody knows it the little tiny dot on the distance over there that's burano with a b that we got those lovely beautiful colorful islands and then somewhere over there we got torcello that he has been one of the first spots that has been habitated 40 brava brava nina 40 40 and that little thing over there is the island of Murano with the M that's exactly where they are doing glass blowing for the past uh, e thousand years here we go that's pretty much the ride that you will be having if you are here in Venice the, the little boat on the right hand side the white and black boat the larger one is the Vaporetto is the water bus and this one is known uh, 4.1 is doing the tour uh, anti-clockwise of the island of Venice plus is ending up into the island of Murano with the M where they do glass blowing and then from here you can even see part of the hospital so we saw it a while ago actually the entrance and we got of course even a water entrance so definitely when you call the ambulance you're going to end up exactly right in, the, in that area here we go yeah remember that any kind of question uh, go ahead and ask no silly question only a lot of stupid answers as usual and uh, of course all the wooden pilings that are standing right here actually uh, in uh, here in venice actually there are uh, thank you carol thank you thank you thank you grazie mille uh, these wooden pilings they are definitely telling us that this canal is deep enough and we will never have problem uh, with um, the tide uh, that you got water and you will never get stuck uh, anywhere actually and here we go just to give you an idea look we got another church that is exactly there because inside of the hospital we would have had different churches because before becoming a hospital it used to be a, a monastery and um, we would have had even the um, the hospital uh, sorry the cemetery that they would have been they would have buried the people that they were unknown that they has been found literally in the middle of the sea with um, that they could not recognize them Good afternoon, a little late, I thought it was 3 p.m. Ciao, Sinotus, Blue. Don't worry, I believe that is 3.30 p.m. right now or something like that, 3.35 or anything closer. And uh, look, even the style of these palaces that they are around this area, they are completely different of the one that we normally see in all the other areas in Venice. Uh, mainly <coughs> because um, this area uh, used to be more the commercial, the business, uh, the working area and so it was totally down to earth. Something that is really amazing uh, and it still amazes me uh, even nowadays and even if I'm from here until 40, 50, 60 years ago we were able to tell from which part of the island we come from how we would have recognized everybody in a really interesting way the way that we were dressed up and the accent even if venice is twice as big as central park new york so it's not a really big area actually and to go from east to west from around um what does it mean? It means that even in such a little tiny area we were able to tell from which part of the island we were coming from by the accent. And so each district, each sorry, sestiere, sestiere, because here we don't have quarters. Venice is divided by six, and so each sestiere 
Buddha had his own accent, his own way of talking, his, way, his own way of acting and doing things. Of course, we would have had areas that it would have been way much more posher, let's say the Beverly Hills area, the Rodeo Drive, <laughs> it would have been the area of Piazza San Marco, and then we would have had all the outskirts and the working sections. Well, let's say Castro, Castello, Castello, Castel, which is the name of the district that we are at at this real moment. There we go, that we got a boat that is arriving right now. Um, it would have been pretty interesting because it was the only fortified area that it was in Venice itself. Why? Because right here we would have had the arsenal, we would have had the shipyard. If the enemies, they would have attacked the shipyard, we would have had no galleys, no boats to do our business. <laughs> Nina, I definitely agree with you. I mean, it's not that big, but you can get really lost. On the other hand, let me tell you, and since that you've already been here many times, as you figure it out, once that you are here, we don't have bad districts, we don't have bad quarters, we don't have areas that you are like, oh my god, where I am, I don't feel comfortable, all these kind of things. Anywhere that you are going, you feel pretty much comfortable, which is great, actually. And uh, you, don't, you never got the feeling of being in the wrong spot at the wrong time. <coughs> and uh, getting lost, of course, uh, in my opinion, is always uh, the, the best way. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you are right, and uh, so you are all right. Uh, but um, there are many tour guides, tour books, uh, guide books uh, that they're always mentioning that getting lost is the best part. Look at what is appearing right now. See, see, Julie, you are right. Uh, so getting lost in Venice is just fantastic. And so again, uh, since uh, that we don't have bad areas, uh, since uh, that we don't have bad districts, uh, bad corners. Uh, it's just fun. See, see, I know that <laughs> you freak out, but you are not the only one that is normally freaking out <laughs> finding your way around. Even for me, actually, sometimes it's a bit funny because I might be on the phone and chatting with friends and not paying attention to where I am. And then after a second, it's like, oh, I've never been here. <laughs> Interesting. Here we go especially for the American friends that they are connected. It is a bit familiar. Washington DC. It should ring a bell. White House, it should ring the second bell. And so the entire church has been designed by Andrea Palladio one of the greatest architects that he was working in this area in the 1500 actually. And if you remember, if you think about the back part of the White House, it looked like this facade. And so the entire idea is that it looked like a Greek temple because Greek style, it was the best one ever invented for um, Mr. Andrea Palladio. And uh, this area is just so gorgeous and beautiful. Let me see if I can show you something. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's, it might be open. Let me see. So if you're coming this way, try to sneak inside of the cloister of the church because I don't know if the signal is good or not. It's always open and so you can easily come this way. But the cloister of uh, San Francesco della Vigna is just magic. Sorry, but the, the signal, it might be funny. I try to go quick. If I go beautiful yeah. I go out I'm afraid that the signal is dropping 
this one is lovely this one is fantastic and um, if you're coming during september time they do the harvest uh, in the vineyard and uh, by now actually i know the friars and so if you are interested we can even organize tours to see the oldest vineyard of the island and that one is worth uh, the <laughs> He worth the picture. It's gonna be a lifetime uh, experience. Uh, the dog that is inside of the vineyard is so nice, uh, and uh, is always looking forward to have a whole, <laughs> a little bit of pets from all the guests that are going to go that way. And so there's a collaborations between the Padua University. We got a company, a, w a winery from Verona that they are doing an excellent job with the production of the wine in this area and uh, let me see the questions give me a second yeah staying close by the train station or rialto bridge or these kind of things and i definitely agree with you that at least you can always find your way back yeah, when it's foggy, it's just fabulous. And uh, uh, when it's foggy, uh, you can get amazing pictures. Look at this. This palace, this building that is appearing right in front of us is what? Uh, so, everybody knows uh, that we got the most important prisons uh, the oldest prisons in venice uh, they used to be the one of the doji's palace uh, but this prison this building with the pinkish color uh, right in front of us it used to be a prison during napoleon time and so in each district in each sestiere we would have had a specific prison for small crimes and small things <laughs> and that this is another great and lovely area let me show you as you can see um let me tell you i got to venice with the train today and from the train station pretty much until rialto bridge it was extremely busy but as you can see as long that you go off the beaten track uh is uh, unbelievably beautiful that is totally empty and there's literally nobody and I really like this canal too. Look, uh, unfortunately we got the scaffoldings, but normally without scaffolding, the view is pretty awesome. Especially the reflections, uh, they are really amazing. And let me show you this side too. <laughs> it seems to be in the lockdown again. <laughs> There's nobody. There's me and the workers. <laughs> it's unreal. That, that there's no sounds, there's no noises, there's literally nobody around. I just shut up a second that so you can hear. seems to be back in the <laughs> January and February again. That's interesting. And so, slowly, slowly, we try to proceed towards uh, the Arsenal, the Arsenal. This area is uh, every day's life in Venice. Uh, and right in this area, you're going to find what? The butcher, the bakery, all the shops how is that even possible where are the inhabitants they're all gone uh, let's say we're definitely having less and less and less and less people that are living in this area unfortunately year after year and uh, uh, we are down to 50 51,000 uh, of inhabitants here we go the the the, the, the graffiti and so this one is uh, uh, it's like the, 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 the social house, uh, that's pretty much where they do concerts, where they do special meetings uh, uh, for youngs, uh, that uh, they do workshops and all these things. Uh, so the graffiti, they are quite nice, I definitely agree. 
and that they didn't spoil uh, historical things or something and so it's quite interesting but as i told you every day's life that's pretty much the area of the bakery and then all the little regular shops uh, including the football club <laughs> of uh, the venezia football club that uh, this year they are in serie a and so think about uh, that if you're coming uh, down here we go shoes shops different kind of stuff Ciao Carlo. Ciao, ciao. and so the entire idea is that you are really super quiet as you can clearly see the entire idea is that if you're coming to buy uh, uh, let's say um, an apartment down this area something like this one that uh, is dated back around the uh, 78 years ago you need 400 500 thousand euros down this area but we are in a big massive residential area down to earth so with those who love venice moving to you think um and so nina uh, let's say that here after here in my opinion uh, the city is getting nicer and nicer and uh, the majority of the people when they buy uh, mm, an apartment or if they rent an apartment they come down this way because it's more calm quiet lovely relaxing you you hardly find tourists down this area it's almost impossible da, grazie mille Debra thank you thank you thank you for supporting yeah let's say <laughs> you can <laughs> or you rent an apartment for an entire year or otherwise actually you can definitely rent um, what uh, you can buy an apartment for the entire year that that's the other idea and uh, everything is normally working pretty properly each way is good and that you can share <laughs> the rent <laughs> that might be the idea that might be the option Yeah, let's say if you are planning to move, um, let's say Castello, Via Garibaldi, all these areas, those are fantastic and those are really great. Uh, all right, the three of us must divide the area before everyone else hears it. <laughs> let's say even buying a property down this area, in my opinion, is really, really nice actually. Especially because it's so calm, so quiet, so beautiful and uh, it's not touristic at all actually you might have a bunch of bed and breakfast but it's not crazy busy sorry for the signal that it might be a bit funny <laughs> uh, julie if you don't have a garden I, ca I, I i can keep an eye to your tortoise i put together with mine in the garden no problems <laughs> and then you can come to my place to visit the tortoise anytime no worries but let's say uh, you can have even a rooftop garden that might be <laughs> a pretty good idea to actually yeah let's say your dog uh, he will be really happy here actually and uh, he's going to have a great time especially because he's going to have a lot of new friends this is the best canal <laughs> in venice in my opinion See, see, Julie, I got a tortoise. Uh, it's the present to my son uh, that he finished the kindergarten last year, actually. We got a, a little one in the garden that is, <laughs> is uh, the name of the tortoise is Spyro. He's not sure if he needs to go to sleep uh, now or in a couple of days. He started to sleep for something like a month and then he woke up and then he started to run around the garden now he's back to sleep um, but he's not sure let's see here we go and so lo look at the view i mean oh hold on give me a second but this one in my opinion is the best one of the entire island <laughs> that's my personal opinion of course but i really like it see see <laughs> <laughs> thank you julie nina yeah no problem it's a ninja a ninja turtle <laughs> uh, but let's say the dog is more like a ninja turtle because he's eating pizza all the time 
uh, Debra, we got a Banksy um, graffito, a Banksy graffito, which is close by Campo Santa Margherita, which is not far from Piazzale Roma, which is the bus and car terminal. And that one has been done in 2019, just before the opening of the Biennale, actually. And uh, it happened uh, right away in, in the middle of the night. But we got one original one and the uh, uh, value of the house triple up <laughs> after the, the graffito. Look at the embankment. Oh, it's a winding embankment, of course. And we definitely built it up everything following the um, original one. See, see, we saw it in the gondola, actually, and we might organize a tour going that way, of course, no problems. And so uh, it's just a matter of deciding which street, which road that we're going to take, of course, no problem. And so let's try to go this way. Sorry for the signal from here until the next square. That is going to be funny. Uh, sorry if I'm running. But here we go. This entire area is just fantastic. There we go. That we are having all the laundry again. And these pictures, they are just uh, so great. Sorry if I cannot stop much, but I'm afraid that the signal is going to drop immediately. Oh, almost out. Give me a second. Coming, coming. Almost there. Sorry. But this one is a big massive mice. Almost out. There we go. Here. Amazing things. Oop. Here we go. Thank you, Anne. Thank you for supporting. Grazie mille. Grazie, grazie, grazie. Look at this street. Look how beautiful everything is. Look how nice. And so it means that the entire street, it would have been a canal that has been, con I mean, it was a canal that has been converted into a street, actually. What's really amazing, interesting, and different from other areas of Venice. Look. Ciao Slavgarda Manga, welcome, welcome. Um, what is the temperature today? And so we were discussing that is around 60, 65 Fahrenheit, around 20 degrees. And uh, it's pleasant and beautiful. Piscina for the one that, that I don't speak Italian is a swimming pool. But it's not the swimming pool that you are thinking about. What is amazing right here is that this one it would have been a fish tank. Right in this section we would have had fish, like uh, fish from the fresh water. And you would have got right here to buy what? Sardines, uh, uh, let's say eels. Uh, or otherwise uh, trouts, uh, carbs, and this kind of fish. Because in the past, if you would have eaten uh, fish from the salted water, you would have considered yourself poor. <laughs> Buying the fish from fresh water, you would have got definitely a different op option and opinion. It's warmer than Texas, interesting, really interesting. And look at this. So normally everybody's thinking that condominium is a new concept, is a new idea. Mm, we're totally wrong. Because all the palaces, all the buildings that they are here, they are Venetian condominiums. And they are approximately 800 years old. Why condominium in this area? Because we are next door to the arsenal. In this way we were not wasting time actually. Uh, the, the workers, they were able to go directly from here to the arsenal without wasting time and uh, let's continue our walk look 
Ciao Paloma, buongiorno, benvenuta, ciao a tutti. You can definitely start to see, hold on, that the picture is burned, I need to go a little bit further. But definitely the wall that is arriving right over there actually is, uh, are the walls of the Arsenale. But before getting to the walls of the Arsenale, look at here. This one is one of the smallest streets that we got in Venice. And so Calle dell'Occhio Grosso. And so definitely is one of the smallest, the second smallest. <laughs> yeah, I say manga. It might have smell a fishy probably, but I say in the past that the entire city would have smell fish probably. Right, uh, <laughs> being in a swamp area and uh, uh, <laughs> that it would have been really interesting. Here we go. You can definitely see that the entire situation here is different. It looked like more a medieval castle rather than Venice. And so they built it up of um, all these uh, walls. It was to protect uh, the city from barbarian invasions. Or, I mean, mainly from uh, uh, the, 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 the people that they were trying to conquer Venice directly from the water, actually. And uh, uh, it's really, really unbelievable. And uh, the general folk in the past was, oh, we're going to build up really tall, tall walls. That, so in this way, if you are coming inside of the walls, you won't be affected by the Black Death. Of course, it didn't work it out. And uh, look, of course, uh, yeah, here we go. I cannot <laughs> stay away from this. A great picture of the laundry <laughs> hanging. And then, of course, literally everywhere when you are in Venice, you are going to see the winged lion that is representing San Marco. The legend wants that every time that you're going to see a book in the left pole, it's a legend, it's the Bible that is written, peace to you, Mark, my evangelist. But, and that the legend wants that when the book is open, they built it up at that, uh, um, that building, that wall during peacetime, if it is closed during wartime. See, see, Sonotus Blue, I definitely agree with you that uh, <laughs> it's giving you a little bit of color. I call them flags, Venetian flags, and here we go. You can definitely get the entire idea. And then, <laughs> this one is one of my favorite streets. It makes me laugh when I read it. Fundamenta, and so fundamenta means embankment, dei penini of the small pork feeds. <laughs> and so basically they were selling pork knuckles, uh, pork chops, uh, but basically uh, this was the area of uh, the Venetian street food. And so since that the workers, they were just on the left hand side working in their arsenal and 800 years ago, we would have had 20, 30,000. Grazie mille Paloma, grazie, grazie, grazie for supporting. Thank you to all of you always for supporting uh, the mission here in Venice. And uh, ciao, ciao Manga, ciao Slavgarda Manga. Grazie mille, have a great day. Go back to work, grazie, grazie, grazie. And thank you for watching. And um, the entire idea is, uh, uh, do you know, hold on, wait a second. Uh, do you know, but it's a branch, uh, Meme with the lion and the saint. <laughs> See, it's pretty much so. Uh, and here we go, look. The entire area here, it would have been really uh, interesting because uh, thank you, Igor <laughs> Greenberg. <laughs> nice to see another Igor, grazie mille. And uh, look, all around this area, it would have been um, the shops of all the artisan. Capo Mastro alle Seghe. This was uh, the guy that he was in charge of the suo, uh, of the so and that uh, it was it needed, if you needed to cut all the um, planks uh, or the trees, it was coming exactly to him. He would have had his atelier, his shop right here. Or otherwise, we got another sign. 
let me see oh here we got this one it's another great thing number 46 appuntador de calafai this guy he was in charge of putting the tar the isolation between the planks and so this was really really interesting as a job and it was really important to make everything totally waterproof this is another little bridge that i really like it anyway by the way the, the water is really low oh the church of san martino that few days ago we celebrated san martin and here is pretty much like uh, uh halloween that <laughs> the kids uh, they are banging and hitting uh, the um, knife and fork and the pots in the streets uh, and they are asking for sweets uh, in the uh, in the venetian streets actually and that is pretty cool here we go look how nice and cute uh, these reflections are yeah you can hear nothing <laughs> it's so quiet uh, let's say we celebrate halloween deborah but um the the feast the festivity of san martino san martin is pretty much the same idea of halloween so the kids they go into the shops into the houses and they ask to have sweets mainly here we go and we're getting right by San Martino, which is one of the oldest churches that we got in town. Give me a second. I'll show you another thing. Whoop. Lion's Mouth. In other episodes, uh, we just saw some other Lion's Mouth. And this one, it was pretty much like a mailbox. And uh, he was able to write it down a letter to sue somebody. Oh, Igor is a really bad boy. He already killed 20 people. It's better if you are going to check it out, what he's doing, how he's doing, how he's killing everybody, all these kind of things. And that's how everything was working. You would have put a letter right here, no blackmail. You had to put names or name and all these things. And then inside there was a box where the priest would have been able to collect everything. Grazie Nina, thank you for supporting. Grazie, grazie, grazie. But here we go. Oldest church in town because San Martino has been erected in the 7th century. Well, let me take you down oh let me show you even this view that is quite nice and pretty grazie mille adriano grazie 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 to all of you for supporting the channel grazie mille look look at the reflections and the colors and so uh, today high tide low tide the situation is slightly different and so the water is a bit misty not too much because you can see pretty much the bottom here we go so it's really <laughs> shallow water this one and let me see here that we don't have boats but uh, this year actually we had uh, mallets literally everywhere but this area it always been really really shallow water and uh, the next canal is pretty much where Angelina Jolie was going in the canal picking up uh, uh, Johnny Depp in the movie The Tourist actually and look now I show you the typical representation of uh, an arsenalotto arsenalotto and so the man with the moustache let me see if I can get a little bit closer. Sorry. Here we go. <laughs> the Arsenalotto. That's him. This big massive man that he was uh, super strong uh, with a long moustache. And that's exactly a man of uh, the a worker or the arsenal would uh, look like. So in a little second. Uh,
how typical is to pick up Johnny Depp in a canal? <laughs> how many chances do you have to pick up Johnny Depp in a canal? <laughs> that, that's a different story. Uh, you see the lanterns, they are, uh, they are beautiful. Although, sorry that I went too fast. But those lanterns, they are lovely. There is an artisan that is still producing the lantern uh, close by Fondamenta Nuove, right in the northern part of the city. And you are still finding these kind of lanterns that they are beautiful. And look at this. We saw it when we were in the Rialto market. And so this kind of stone that is sticking out is telling everybody that this one it would have been a shop, that they were definitely selling something. And uh, ah, here we go. And so that here is getting complicated with all the road signs. And so Parroquia de San Martin. And so the parish of the San Martin Church that we just passed it is taking care of the entire area. Campo dell'Arsenal, the square of the arsenal or the shipyard. And we got Corte del Cafetier. We got the courtyard of the coffee maker, of the guy that is selling coffee. So think about uh, that coffee has got a pretty long uh, history here in the area of Venice uh, and everybody got pretty well addicted with uh, the coffee a while ago because especially the coffee was arriving from Turkey. And uh, look, look how beautiful. This one is one of the largest uh, lion um, selections that we got in town actually and that this big lion that is right here is arriving directly from the Piraeus directly from Athen and so the, the, the port let's make sure that there are no Johnny's <laughs> anymore in the area now we check it out now we check it out the canal if it's still there and we got they call it a runa, rune that is right here that has been sculpted when it was down in the area of the ancient uh, Greece, down in Athen, that has been sculpted by the Vikings. Uh, th this picture is just fabulous, uh, so I really like it. And uh, here we go. Look how pretty. Nowadays, uh, uh, the entire area is definitely close uh, to the public, and so it's a military area. And uh, I show you something, especially because this year we are celebrating Dante. The, we are celebrating Dante, and Mr. Dante Alighieri, which is the father of uh, the Italian language, which is the father of the uh, divine comedy. He definitely described um, the arsenal of Venice as the hell because the living and working conditions they were extremely bad and extremely low actually that's the reason why I mean the the, 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 the Divine Comedy it was a book that it was divided in three parts so you would have had uh, the purgatory you would have had the paradise you would have had the hell and at that time Dante was playing pretty much God oh you are good you go to the paradise you are bad you go to <laughs> to the hell and uh, definitely the description of the Venetian dar arsenal it was pretty bad because uh, the working situation was extremely bad but now you can clearly see that the lions are magnificent i definitely agree with you and and uh, let me go up to the bridge and all the bridges in the past they would have been all in wood in timber and uh, of course they has been replaced <laughs> oh I see something that is not good <laughs> see Debra there are seven circles <laughs> and going deep down the situation is getting worse and worse and worse why this thing is not good it's salt winter is coming if the bridge is getting frozen in this way we throw the salt, salt around they shouldn't be too slippery eventually. I'll give you a second, let me try to go up. It is always fun and tricky. Here we go. Then, so Angelina Jolie, she was uh, trying to go inside this way in the movie. <coughs> now you get the full idea why we call it Castello, Castle, because it looked like a castle. And uh, 
the entire idea see see Debra you're right the salt is bad for the concrete and uh, uh, on the last few years they are using a mix of uh, salt and sand but normally they don't put the salt into the concrete but they put it into the um, into the wood which is not good either but uh, it seems that is one of the best solution at the moment but normally we use it when it's a disaster uh, look how pretty so think about that inside of this section we would have ended up having 20 30 000 workers that they were working here nowadays the venetian marines they live they train and work right in this area look oh the reflections they are just so pretty now in a second we try to go out of that so we try to see part of the sunset from the bay of saint mark Hold on. So at this point we are not far from Piazza San Marco. See um, Senotus Blue, uh, I definitely agree. This entire area, uh, if you got the chance, uh, come down this area because it's really laid back, quiet, fantastic, relaxing. It's not crazy busy and for any reason you are coming next year. Uh, this, sorry, mosquito. Um, if you're coming down this area it's going to be fantastic because we're going to have the Biennale of Art that is going to take place around this area so it's going to be really really interesting and so the Biennale is normally taking place inside of the arsenal inside of the gardens of the Biennale it's going to be spread out all over the entire highland of Venice and so it's going to be just fabulous the entire thing and look at here that's the other lovely peak that i really like it we got baby ricardo that he, he was born i like it here we go that we got all the bows normally we put the blue bows and we got the little teddy bear <laughs> here we go normally it is the during um, springtime she's going to have uh, flowers literally everywhere and so normally she's got an amazing uh, collections of petunias ah. let's have a look at the reflection of the area and I believe that it's gonna be spectacular in a little second oh slowly slowly so just to give you an idea as long that we go out uh, on the left hand side we're going to have the gardens of the Biennale. <laughs> thank you, Miles Davis. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Interesting name. Um, the gardens of the Biennale that are going to be on the left hand side, we've got Piazza San Marco that it will be on the right hand side. Uh, let's say, Julie, um, October and November, in my, in, in my opinion, are the best time to come to Venice. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's just perfect, lovely, relaxing. Uh, this year, from my point of view, we're having more people than usual, uh, which is strange because normally during this time of the year, <laughs> there's me and me, <laughs> not much going on actually, and so it's weird. And, um, oh, look at the air! Let Julie, not November though, let's say November, normally if you're not coming, um, we're supposed to have extremely high tide now, but we are not having it. See, give me a second, I just crossed the bridge, that's so we reach the top, that's so we can enjoy the sunset, that is what. <laughs> Here we go, Piazza San Marco. See, I did. Oh, look at here, look at here. Ooh, wow. <laughs> ah, we are pretty lucky. See, 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 the reflections are amazing right now. Give me a second. Uh, we climb the bridge. Yeah, probably I pick up. Sure, coming this way or going to Via Garibaldi, but. I believe that this one is the best choice at the moment. 
Hold on. Let me go a little bit higher. Choo, 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 choo. Let me find a good spot so we can enjoy everything without having barriers or something. Oh, look at here. Yeah, let's say coming in known a touristic time is just marvelous. And the next time, if you are coming into Venice, make sure that you go to the island of San Giorgio Maggiore. Normally, you catch uh, the boat number two from there, right in front, uh, sorry, from there, right in front of the Church of the Pietà. You go across and you stop directly into the Church of San Giorgio. And uh, that's the best uh, view about the uh, sunset in the Bay of St. Mark. See, perfect timing, Nina. <laughs> I would have never thought that we were so perfect. <laughs> by chance, by chance, at this time. We've been pretty lucky, actually. And the Italian disorganization sometimes is working. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you know that normally Italians, they are not well renowned to be organized. And this time, it definitely worked out, believe it or not. Let's see, hold on. We get a different perspective. Oh, here we go. Let me see so I can read. Thank you, Aurora, watching for Scotland. Grazie mille. <laughs> Miles Davis, thank you. <laughs> Well, we hope to see you soon, really here, actually, that for, for, for real, actually, that so you, everybody will be able to enjoy the entire area, that it really is amazing. Thank you, Chancey. Um, yes, and all those, uh, uh, November it looks perfect, I definitely agree with you, but let me give you a 360 degrees. The sky is just unreal. Well, let's say taking a Vaporetto ride. Uh, uh, thank you, Julie, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But definitely, yeah, here we go. Look, look at the colors right now. We got even the Vaporetto that is arriving. <laughs> So definitely catching the Vaporetto number one. If you go from, let's say, Piazza San Marco to the Lido Island, and so you're going to be totally opposite, that is another big plus. Because you will be standing pretty much down that way, that area, and uh, you got a great view over Piazza San Marco and the sunset. So the view is just incredible, but let's enjoy this because this one is amazing. Ciao, Chancy. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you for all of you for watching. Uh, it's always our pleasure to show you the, the best. If you got any kind of practical, uh, if you need any kind of practical information about Venice, if you got anything, just ask. And so, um, suggestions rather than anything else. I'm going to be really, really happy to give you at least my point of view, actually, which is a point of view from a local. Oh, here we go, look. That's so you can get the full idea. Grazie, grazie to all of you. But right now, in a second, uh, we're going to get a different uh, View. Oui, Nathalie, les, les, les couchers du soleil, c'est vraiment fantastique maintenant. Uh, we need a tour during the Aqua Alta. <laughs> that it will be fun, actually. Uh, we done part of the tour with the Aqua Alta when Vania, she was doing the tour with the um, Japanese, when we done the tour in Japanese. And if you watch the previous videos, you are going to be able to see the Aqua Alta in Piazza San Marco. But we, we can definitely plan to do a tour with the Aqua Alta. As long as we know that uh, it's arriving, we can get organized and we can get to see it, of course. 
Yeah, the view is amazing. Chainsy, I really hope that you're gonna be able to manage to come this way, actually. Uh, the, it will be just fantastic. I don't know. We should be able to have uh, um, Carnival, Carnival during that time. Thank you, thank you, Anne. Thank you, grazie mille. We should be able to have a <coughs> Carnival parties going on during that time of the year. Uh, we should have Mardi Gras around the 20th of February this year. Not sure if we're going to celebrate or what. Same thing for the New Year's Eve, still don't know. Ah, oh, look. <laughs> Let me stand at this side so we can see the entire view. Give me a second. Oh, here we go. Yeah, the view is spectacular. I mean, let me see as we try to balance everything. Well, here we go. Now, let's say at this real moment, what is happening is that we've got a lot of scaffoldings around and Venice is doing the makeup. And so once that you will be back here in Venice, you will see a Venice totally brand new and totally beautiful and uh, <laughs> better than before, for sure. Let me try to adjust even. Let's see. Oh, here we go. That we got even a bit bigger. So we can get a better idea. Let me stand still a second that so you can get the full idea. <laughs> Nina. <laughs> I don't know actually, uh, thank you Austin, thank you, thank you. Um, I don't know, um, I'm having a problem with the battery. Uh, it's quite funny at the moment. I believe that is the cold that is burning the battery. Normally the battery can last something like two hours, but when the temperatures, they are dropping, even uh, the battery is dropping, unfortunately. And so I try to go as long as the phone uh, will last, uh, but I don't think uh, that it will last much because uh, it's dropping, the, I mean, the battery is down to 20% left. And uh, uh, I'm sorry about that. But I believe that is a matter of the, the weather, that the temperature is dropping really quick and then uh, the battery is not gonna last uh, long, sorry. I try to do my best and so let's do like this. Let's try to walk down to Piazza San Marco that so we can get an idea of how the atmosphere look like that way. Oh. And we can get the full idea of the sunset. Sorry, give me a second. Yeah, let's say starting from now, according with last year, once that the first cold are arriving, the battery is not definitely lasting two hours. So if it's lasting uh, one hour and a half, it's already a big success. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, I think about that now is around uh, 4.30. Sunrise is normally around 7. Yeah, yeah, Nina, I take you home to your piazza. At least we, we try to go down that way. At least we see how the situation is. Uh, talking about traffic situation. <coughs> and so today, we, I mean, we got a little bit of tourists. Uh, but we got a lot of Italians around. Because today we ended up having the graduation day in Piazza San Marco. So we had a lot of students from the Venetian University that they got graduated in Piazza San Marco itself. So it was quite, quite busy. The entire Strada Nuova from the train station until Rialto. 
and so you can clearly see the difference from the back alleys and this one. Something new from your last visit, you never saw this. So this one, it used to be the nursing home for the Venetians. And this one, it was one of the five stars nursing home here uh, in Venice and uh, top notch during the 70s. Nowadays, it's called K-D-D-O, C-A-D-I-D-I-O. And this one, it's a brand new five stars hotel. See on your right, and so in Norway, batteries, uh, uh, telephone, uh, um, the, 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 the photo things, uh, or the computers, or the iPads, or anything similar. They're not lasting much, it's too cold, and definitely the cold is killing all the batteries. Here we go, it's pretty much the same idea. Well, let's say, uh, enjoy the decline. The idea is that uh, normally the locals, uh, they stay where we've been. And so the back alley is uh, mm, uh, of uh, Castello, that is pretty much where the locals, they normally love to stay. Because it's quiet, lovely, relaxing, you've got a bunch of bars uh, that they are not touristic at all, that you got regular prices and that the atmosphere is just lovely and fantastic. And so those back alleys, they are just perfect, perfect, perfect. And uh, normally we try not to go to Piazza San Marco or Rialto because normally they are too crazy busy. Senotus, let me tell you, uh, that's pretty much uh, what is happening on the last few years. But even before the COVID, the majority of the people, when they were meeting up with me, that they were rooming around on their own, the first request about the tour was, take me out of the touristic areas. I don't want to see anybody. Take me whatever you like, whatever you want, but I don't want to see touristic areas. I totally agree because um, uh, 2019, 2018, 2016, 17, and 15, it was pretty much a nightmare actually. It was too much for the locals, it was too much for the tourists actually. It was just too, too, too much for literally everybody. Now let's say uh, the situation is quite good and uh, uh, <laughs> I cannot stand people anymore, but that's a different story. I mean, not people, crowds, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but I cannot stand crowds anymore, actually. And so as long that uh, I got uh, tourists that I love to get around, uh, get off the beaten path, uh, I'm super happy and excited because in this way I can show the real Venice uh, and uh, everybody can see the best part of the city, actually, of course. Here we go, look at the view that we are having that, uh, at this moment. Uh, <laughs> misanthropic guy. <laughs> I uh, get in that way pretty much, actually. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I mean, it, it's different. The entire situation is getting completely different. Uh, and even people are traveling in different ways. Uh, and even the mentalities are changing completely. And so it makes sense. I, I totally understand when uh, they got to me and they're like, please, uh, I don't want to see anybody. And that makes sense to me. Oh, they even took all the scaffoldings off uh, of the Church of the Mercy, uh, the Church of the Pietà. That is when it was the working spot uh, of uh, Vivaldi. And so, uh, Mr. Vivaldi that he composed, uh, he wrote uh, the Four season. He was right here in the Church of the Pietà that he was an orphanage. Sì, si, sì, si, Adriana, è meravigliosa. Hai pienamente ragione, siamo proprio fortunati. Anche perché i colori oggi sono incredibili. Hold on. 
let me try to go down and then I try to read the messages <laughs> Hosting, lucky you that you are down in Florida, actually. Uh, I was in Florida a while ago. During Christmas time. And uh, I was in New Year's Eve down in Miami, actually. So Christmas time, we are, we are down to the Keys. So that was perfect, beautiful, nice and warm. Fantastic, lucky you. Let me see who. Oh, oh, let's see if uh, the leaning tower of the Church of the Greci of the Greeks uh, is still leaning. Oh, oh, oh. Here we go. This is another iconic picture. Cenotus, so let's say, he's pretty much the same idea of the Palladian style, but let's say. The Palladian churches that we got here in Venice, sorry that I went too fast, we got the Church of St. George, the Church of the Ditelle, and the Church of the Redeemer. Those are, and the one of San Francesco della Vigna. Ah, here we go, the sky is just perfect. I don't know if the battery is going to make it Anti Piazza San Marco, sorry about that, but it seems uh, that it's going to die any minutes for now. Let's see, finger crossed. Yeah, here we go, you're going to see quite a lot of people at the moment. As I told you, those are the ones that they were celebrating, the, they are all arriving from the university celebrations that they were taking place in Piazza San Marco. Yeah, normally, I don't know, they look like students. Normally, in this area, <laughs> pistol anytime. I will be really happy to show you <laughs> Venice uh, with high tide or without uh, and uh, getting lost in the worst bar of Venice. <laughs> Just joking, of course. But look, look at the view. Yeah, uh, just to give you an idea, now it's getting a little bit chilly. And so it's definitely uh, a bit colder than when we started. It's not really the cold, but it's probably the humidity. And so I feel more the humidity now than before. Here we go. That's the problem that we don't like. And so we got all the planks that they are right here, ready for the high tide and as long as the water is rising. We spread them out and we walk right on the top of those with our Wellington's rubber boots, uh, fishing rubber boots, uh, or whatever they are actually. But uh, 2019, I was bringing uh, people to the Hotel Danieli that I was doing a transfer. The entire Danieli Hotel was a gigantic fish tank. <laughs> now I'm having a big laugh, but at that time it wasn't, uh, it wasn't fun actually. <laughs> So I would have had the water pretty much until the knees. So the situation was really bad. So just to give you an idea, oop, the water was until here, more or less. There we go. You can get a little glimpse of the entrance of the Danieli. Now, in this way, we're going to get the day so speedy see pistol we're having a great day we're extremely lucky today so the weather is just gorgeous and perfect la dolce vita <laughs> really happy that uh, he was here in 20 ah, the battery is almost gone i'm really happy that you enjoy venice in 2005, try to hurry up just to give at least a little glimpse of Piazza San Marco. I got the 10% of battery. 
and so it's dropping pretty fast. Sorry. Let's see. And so Bridge of Sights. That's from this point, Bridge of Sights, Doge's Palace and Piazza San Marco in the next five minutes. Here we go. At least we're going to get all the iconic <coughs> pictures and landmark of the city. But you can see it's uh, oh, 3, 4.30, 4.40 or something like that. And the canal is totally empty, which is really interesting. I mean, usually November is extremely quiet and there's nobody. And so having all these people around is weird. <laughs> Let's try to get around this way so we can get the full view of our Doji's Palace. 1100 years of history, 120 Doge rule and run the Venetian Republic directly from here. Austin, let's say that the, the, the walkboards, uh, they always been here, but if you have been here in Venice a while ago, of course you would have saw less uh, walkboards. Now we got more and more and more to give a little bit of more comfort to everybody. Before actually we would have had just few, but the thing is that the situation is just worse and worse. So, think about that normally we get something like 58 days of extremely high tide uh, every year in the past the situation was different we would have had less days with the high tide here we go uh, that the other new thing is that if you are coming to venice you're going to find uh, some uh, uh, <laughs> restoration works going on that especially they will be digging in the surrounding of the St. Mark Basilica because they are making the entire foundations of the Basilica waterproof and uh, while that they were digging they even found the original uh, floor uh, dating back of the 1300 that is totally in bricks Now that there's no more sun, the wind is a bit cold. Let me see. That we try to go right in the middle of Piazza San Marco and let's see how busy that it will be. But that's pretty much how the works they look like. It's really interesting at the moment. Oh, here we go. This is here we go, definitely graduation day. We're going to get a little glimpse of Piazza San Marco. So the graduation was taking place exactly here, exactly same spot where we normally do the opening of the Carnevale of Venice. And so of course we got more people than normal because they're all here for the graduation. Otherwise we would have had definitely less people around. Here we go, that we just stop on the side just so I can give you a 360 degrees view. They're already collecting everything. So before that the battery is going to drop, I would like to say thank you to all of you for watching. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for supporting the channel. And uh, I really hope that you enjoy our walk around the city of Venice, actually. So we've been pretty lucky with the weather today. Here we go, that we got our best view over the St. Mark Basilica. Ciao East Park, Colorado. Ciao a tutti. Sorry, low battery. Uh, the, the situation is quite funny. Let me stand on the side. That, so you can definitely see my face, I can say bye to all of you but definitely grazie mille for watching i love you venice 
It has been a pleasure. Uh, stay tuned because we've got new things arriving, new tours, new ideas arriving. And grazie mille. Hope to see you soon here in Venezia. Ciao, grazie, a presto.